Welcome to the newsroom on CNN Philippines in the news. Once again, ex-OFW representative John Bertiz finds himself in another viral video. He allegedly refused to undergo security protocol at the airport. A surge in the death toll from the quake and tsunami in Indonesia. Authorities say 832 were killed and more bodies could still be recovered. And one of the biggest nights in showbiz, celebrities converge for a TV network's charity ball. Good evening, I'm Mayra Rodriguez. Thanks for joining us. Ex-OFW party list representative John Bertiz speaks up after yet another viral video. This time, netizens accuse him of harassing an airport security personnel. Our Makoy Popioko reports. A CCTV video showing what looks like a confrontation between a passenger and an airport security personnel is making rounds on social media. In the viral post that has been shared thousands of times by netizens, a man in blue shirt is seen entering the final security gate at the Naia Terminal 2. According to the video's caption, the man is Representative John Bertiz III of the Axe OFW party list. After entering the body scanner, the passenger faces... We will try to give you that report in a bit. Meanwhile, authorities assure the public they are looking into the incident. In a joint statement, the Department of Transportation, the Manila International Airport Authority, and the Office for Transportation Security say all reports, complaints, and actual video footage are now being consolidated and evaluated as part of a thorough investigation. Let's watch that report again. A CCTV video showing what looks like a confrontation between a passenger and an airport security personnel is making rounds on social media. In the viral post that has been shared thousands of times by netizens, a man in blue shirt is seen entering the final security gate at the Naia Terminal 2. According to the video's caption, the man is Representative John Bertiz III of the Axe OFW party list. After entering the body scanner, the passenger faces the security personnel and forcibly takes his ID. Netizens are enraged over the lawmaker's behavior. The lawmaker confirms that he is the passenger in the video, which was recorded on Saturday around 7 in the morning, shortly before he flew to Cebu City. Bertiz, however, says the video was maliciously edited and that the story on social media is twisted. Kung makikita nyo sa CTTV, nagsasalita ako. Nang sinasabi ko lang sa kanya, in a nice way. Sabi kong ganun, uh, meron naman akong ano, uh, level 4 security ID. And hindi ko naman sinasabi mo ba rin. Pero sana, pinahubad mo rin yung, yung lumampas sa akin, nauna sa akin. Bakit ako, pinagpilang best mo na akong pinababate. Tapos sabi ko po dun, sir, baka siguro bago ka pa, hindi mo pa alam yung yung usual protocol. And he was so rude and arrogant. Tatlong taon na ako rito, no? Ano ba yung ID mo? Sino ka ba? Kinano na ko eh. Bertiz says he has reported the incident to Airport Authority General Manager Ed Monreal, who told him that the agency would investigate the matter. Bertiz says Monreal texted him Saturday afternoon that the security personnel was extending his apologies. Now the lawmaker raises concern over the release of the CCTV video on social media. This really involves a very high uh, security threat, lalong-lalo na sa ating mga paliparan. Especially kung, halimbawa, that uh, video can be shared to anybody at, uh, at a price. This is really a concern for uh, national security, yung pag-share nila ng video ng ganyan. Bertie says his part of list has attended to some OFW complaints on stolen items and belongings. He says he has requested for CCTV videos before, but the Office for Transportation Security demanded a court order. Now the lawmaker questions why the video was leaked, urging transport officials to investigate the matter. CNN Philippines reached out to Monreal and has been waiting for his comment. However, multiple sources from within the agency confirm officials are now investigating the matter. They are particularly tracing who released the CCTV video to the public. Makoy Popyoko, CNN, Philippines. 
In other news, Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano defends the government's drug war before the UN General Assembly in New York City on Saturday. Cayetano says the government is on track in saving the country from becoming a narco state. He then clarified that the government is not turning its back on human rights. More Filipinos are satisfied with the performance of President Duterte amid his controversial remarks in recent months. The latest social weather station survey shows President Duterte's third quarter net satisfaction rating rose to very good from good. Meanwhile, respondents were also asked if they found some of the president's recent statements as vulgar. 83% said Duterte's stupid God remark was bastos or vulgar. Also, 63% described as vulgar the president's statement that Davao City has a lot of rape cases because it has many beautiful women. The National Privacy Commission, or NPC, says Facebook should inform all Filipino users whose data were compromised by the recent hacking incident. Francis Acero, chief of NPC's Complaints and Investigation Division, says the social media giant has until Friday to make a more detailed disclosure about the hack. Facebook earlier told affected users they were logged out of their accounts on Friday due to an attack that stole their access tokens, which keep Facebook users logged into their accounts. An estimated 50 million Facebook users were reportedly affected by the hack, though the NPC has no idea how many of them were Filipinos. We were in contact with them and we've told them that the notification that they've done so far individually uh, needs, uh, it lacks the standard for notification in our jurisdiction. They have to give that information within five days. It's, there's, there's no need to ask them for a timeline. They have to comply because everyone is on it, and especially with Facebook Zero. Facebook is the internet for most Filipinos. We do have to be very careful about how Facebook handles our data. Acero adds the NPC is conducting its own investigation into the incident. In entertainment, award-winning singer and actress Leia Salonga will grace the concert stage as she celebrates her 40 years in the music industry. Our Tristan Nodala tells us more. So needless to say, she conquers the world stage with her peach-perfect voice. She sings with clarity, but most of all, she sings with heart and passion. Tony Award-winning performer Lea Salonga is back in the country after a successful stint on the Broadway show Once on This Island. And she's now gearing up to celebrate her 40th year in the industry through a special two-night concert next month. Lea reveals that this milestone will be dedicated to those special people close to her heart, like her mother. She, she get, she'll see both of her kids up on the stage and then she's, she's very proud that the two of us are doing as well as we are. Known for her all-out performances, Leia says she still prepares and rehearses a lot. It's, Obviously, it's, the a, little, it's a little rehearsal. more raw, yeah. um, but that's also when I make my mistakes. This is when I'm like, oh, there were two more bars in, in, in that instrumental, which I forgot to count. And then Gerard will be screaming instructions at me. He's like, no, not yet. And, and sometimes that's the fun part. That's the fun part. And then some things will go wrong with the intro of a song. He's like, no. He'll be like, no, 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 no. We'll do this again. That's what this is for. Leia also answers the question on whether or not a reunion movie with on-screen partner Aga Mulak will happen soon. As far as interest, sure. But it boils down to the project being right. I, I need someone with me with whom I feel really comfortable because it's 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 hard it's it's hard enough i don't want to make it any more difficult 40 years of music 40 years of showing filipino talent worldwide what a journey it has been for lea salonga i'll be coming for you anywhere tristan Nodalo, cnn philippines 40th anniversary concert happens on October 19th and 20th at the PICC. When the newsroom returns, more bodies recovered in Indonesia after a powerful quake triggered a tsunami on Friday. And the lotto jackpot of almost 778 million pesos is still up for grabs. Will someone finally win tonight? Stay tuned.
Facebook Live. Thank you, Paul, for joining us this evening. We have more stories coming up. Uh, first of all, uh, good evening to all of you, and I hope you can share your comments and your thoughts on the stories tonight, especially uh, one of our top stories the viral video involving uh, acts or FW party list representative John Bertiz. He is uh, speaking up, though, about that viral video. Uh, netizens are accusing him of uh, skipping a security protocol or refusing to um, take off his shoes during uh, that uh, uh, level of security measure on Sanaia. And he did say that... Um, the video was twisted and he is questioning the release of that CCTV footage and why it was leaked. Sabi niya, he was, uh, yung statement niya po kanina, sabi niya, he was, uh, the earlier part of that that we didn't see in the viral video was that uh, he was questioning actually the, the entry of some uh, Chinese Chinese looking nationals na in escort down ng naia and he was questioning why they didn't go through uh, security protocol tapos and then this uh, viral video came out um, authorities are assuring the public that uh, they are investigating this incident uh, in a joint statement uh, the DOTR and the Manila International Airport Authority and the Office for Transportation Security uh, they're saying all reports and complaints and actual video footage are now being consolidated and evaluated and that they're conducting a thorough investigation. Um, time for our greetings. I hope you have time for some greetings tonight. Hello to... Um, so many comments about that story, actually. You know, the story ni Makoy Popioko. Hello to JM. Hello to Rick. Tambis, Pagao, Fortune Castro, Kane, Arvin Ching, Karen Yap, Hector Chrysostomo, uh, Don Edward Romero Pascual, all commenting on that story involving that viral video of um, Congressman Bertiz. Uh, Eddie Lor David, um, Adorsky Pancho Palcon and K. Harold Carlos Almoni Dovar, Clarence De La Cruz, Stanley Dua is watching, Mark Marianas and Amor Salve Casas, Erseam and Stanley Dua, Angelina Felebrico, Carlin Ufre, and Nap Bercasho. We have 20 seconds to go, guys. Stay tuned until the end of the show. This is the news from CNN Philippines. Welcome back. Embattled Senator Antonio Trillanes gets to spend the weekend at home with his family. No arrest warrant was issued by the Makati RTC Branch 148 on Friday in connection with avoiding of his amnesty on coup d'etat charges. He was holed up for more than three weeks at the Senate following the nullification of an amnesty granted to him by former President Noino Yaquino in 2011. He says he will resume work at the Senate tomorrow. Uh, for now, I'm going to and uh, I'll try to be with my family. And uh, uh, we'll see um, within the next few days. I will uh, visit my mother who is confined right now. At, um, then we will just assess the situation as uh, it comes. One big realization that we had you know, is uh, yung marami palang nagmamalasakit na Pilipino na minsan iisipin mo na uh, parang kakaunti lang kayong lumalaban at tumatayo. Pero nung nangyari ito ay lumabas sila at uh, nagsalita sila at nakiramay sila. So lalong tumitiba yung ating uh, paninindigan dahil dyan at lalo tayong motivate and uh, na-inspire to continue doing what we're doing. 
In news overseas, U.S. President Donald Trump defends his Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. In a rally in Virginia Saturday, Trump told the crowd Kavanaugh has, quote, suffered the meanness, the anger of the Democratic Party throughout his nomination process. Judge Kavanaugh faced the Senate Judiciary Committee Thursday following the testimony of Christine Blasey Ford, who claims he sexually assaulted her when they were teenagers. A Senate vote on Kavanaugh's nomination is delayed as the FBI investigates the allegations against him. Indonesian officials announced a huge surge in the death toll from Friday's earthquake and tsunami. It has now climbed to more than 800. Hundreds of others have been injured after a 7.5 magnitude quake triggered a tsunami that sent waves smashing into buildings and swept away homes in the coastal city of Palu. The city is home to 350,000 people. Authorities say the affected area was bigger than initially thought. Rescuers are still searching for survivors trapped under the debris. They say more bodies could still be recovered. Indonesia's Disaster Management Agency says evacuation efforts were slowed down by lack of heavy equipment and personnel. There are particular concerns about the fishing community of Dongala, where the impact is still unclear. The Foreign Affairs Department sends its condolences to Indonesia. DFA Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano, who was in New York for the UN General Assembly, said the Philippines is ready to respond and extend assistance. Elon Musk is out as Tesla chairperson. It's part of his deal with U.S. regulators. They announced on Saturday that that settles charges against him over alleged misleading tweets. Musk agrees to leave his chairperson role within 45 days and pay a $20 million fine. He will remain as Tesla CEO but cannot seek re-election as chair for three years. A court document states Musk took the deal without admitting or denying the allegations. The lawsuit filed by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission this week claims Musk misled investors when he tweeted last month he had secured funding to take the company private. Musk says the suit against him was unjustified. Still ahead, heads up consumers, an increase in Patron's LPG prices takes effect later at 12.01 a.m. And a night of glitz and glamour for charity. We give you highlights of a celebrity ball that netizens are still talking about. This is Newsroom Weekend on CNN Philippines. Stay tuned. viewers on Facebook Live. Good evening to everyone joining us tonight. It's a Sunday night. How are you? Tell us where you're watching from and you can share your comments on um, our Facebook Live over here. I'll be reading uh, some of your greetings. Hello kay Josie Dariagan, kay Domingo Arturo Jeronimo Francisco, Jesse Bautista is watching, Marilyn Payak and Carlin Yufre. Ricky Sobre Pena is uh, commenting on still the viral video of uh, Congressman um, Bertis of the Act's OF, or Act OFW party list group. Sabi niya calling um, House of Representatives Ethics Committee. Siguro sin sabi niya dapat uh, or sana investigahan ng Ethics Committee yung um, the latest controversy that that's uh hold on I'm just trying to scroll Jen Cornejo Apongol watching from uh, the UAE Renato Mariano uh, giving his comment love seal from Kuwait Canalina Servillon Watanabe and Monching Abelardo Tina Barbosa from Belgium hello to you Ernel Lopez Casuga, Christian Ian Gumapa, and Kay Glenn Elnas. John John Sanchez is watching Jeannie Agosto from Kuwait. 
Brian Ibrahim is saying happy weekend and Carl June V. Kanonoy. Hello, shout out. And Makoy Abitria. Marcus Peter Fajardo also commenting on that story. Makoy, uh, from Japan daw si Makoy Abitria. Si Mark Cayago from Pasay. Frankie Postrano from Doha. Claudia Zobel from saying hello from Norway. Alfredo Aujero saying hello. And RJ De La Rosa. Glenn Elnas is saying good evening. Avik Molina from Kuwait. Francis Alfeche Tuazon, hi from Alberta. Thelma Hieronimo Katapusan, she's watching from Macau. Arted Alulod Perez from Qatar. Ruben Viray is saying hello and Wenki Lucero. 15 seconds to go, guys. Stay tuned until the end of the show. Back with more stories. Heads up, consumers. An increase in LPG prices will take effect tomorrow, October 1st. Petron is adding 2 pesos and 35 centavos per kilogram of its cooking gas. This means an additional 25 pesos and 85 centavos for every 11 kilogram cylinder. Meanwhile, every liter of Petron's auto LPG product is up by 1 peso and 30 centavos. Price adjustments reflect the international contract prices of LPG for the month of October. President Duterte vows to give luxury watches to soldiers who will be awarded with a Medal of Valor in the future. In his visit to an army camp in Agusan del Sur, the president honored newly promoted officers and awardees of the 401st and 402nd Infantry Brigade. The president said future awardees will be given a Rolex. Duterte also promised both brigades 100,000 pesos each. The Medal of Valor is the highest honor the armed forces gives to soldiers for bravery or self-sacrifice. The country is observing Elderly Filipino Week from October 1 to 7. The Social Welfare Department kicked off the event with a Walk for Life this morning. More than 1,700 senior citizens attended. This is to promote the rights and welfare of the elderly. As part of the week-long celebration, senior citizens get free rides at the LRT2 and MRT3 starting tomorrow until October 7. They can avail of free rides from 7 to 9 a.m. and 5 to 7 p.m. at the LRT2. And free rides will be offered the entire day at the MRT3 and just present any ID bearing your birth date. In the UAAP, the UP Fighting Maroons back in the win column. They ended their three-game losing streak, beating the De La Salle Green Archers in the first game 67 to 61. The Maroons claimed their second win thanks to Bright Aqueti, who led with 19 points. Juan Gomez Deliano followed with 17 points. And this just in, the UE is winless no more. The Red Warriors took down the FEU Tamaraos for their first win in this season. Final score, 90-65. There's hope for people living with HIV. That is the message of a new Filipino young adult novel. Mga Batang Paws tells the story of four teenagers living with HIV and how they fought to live and be accepted. Behind this game-changing novel is Palanca Award-winning author Segundo Matias Jr., who is also behind the hit fantasy series Moy Moy Lulumboy. Matias tells CNN Philippines he hopes his novel will help spread awareness about the disease. Maging aware, that's the goal. Maging aware about HIV. Maging aware na hindi ito nakakawa, hindi ka magkipag-sex o blood transfusion. Um, maging aware na may stigma and stop it. Hindi ibig sabihin na katabi kang pause o positive. Parang panidirihan mo, gaya ng mga na-interview. Uh, and maging aware na uh, hindi ito death sentence. Pag nagkaroon ka ng virus, you will not die. Basta pa-doktor ka, may gamot na, but it will not cure it. It's treatable. You will still live. Mga Batang Pods is now available in leading bookstores nationwide. 
The government's economic management and reforms are keeping the economy strong. That's according to the International Monetary Fund. But it says prices of goods in the country will continue to rise in the coming months. Our Rex Lamito reports. The International Monetary Fund says the Philippine economy continues to perform well. This comes after the IMF concludes its Article 4 consultation with Philippine economic authorities. An IMF team visited the country to collect data and discuss economic movements with authorities. In its report, the IMF sees the economy growing stronger in the second half of the year. 6.6% in the third quarter and 6.9% in October to December. The Philippine economy is uh, doing very well. We have one of the fastest growing economies in the region. And we continue to see growth outlook uh, be favorable. The IMF credits the government's sound economic management and reforms in attaining inclusive growth. The multilateral lender, however, admits short-term risk have increased. Among them are the rising price of goods and services or inflation and the less favorable international forces, such as the increasing global oil prices and possible interest rate hike by the U.S. Federal Reserve. They are expecting inflation to remain high in the coming months. The FBI is, uh, is fully committed to price stability and, uh, uh, and uh, it's indicated that uh, it takes inflation seriously. The IMF also welcomes the Banco Central's move to increase interest rates to ensure price stability. The BSP aggressively hiked its policy rates by another 50 basis points to cool down inflation. The international organization also supports the country's move to import rice to curb inflation. But it also enjoins the government to support small farmers if it aims to liberalize the rice industry. Overall, the IMF says their outlook on the country for the coming years remains favorable, putting the Philippines in a good position to deal with poverty and inequality between rich and poor. Rex Remitio, CNN, Philippines. It was a night of glitz and glamour at last night's ABS-CBN Ball. Pauline Versosa tells us who were the best dressed and who got netizens talking. It was an unforgettable night of glitz and glamour. Hordes of celebrities graced the ABS-CBN Charity Ball at the Makati Shangri-La Saturday night. The millennial stars... Industry veterans... They were there, all dressed to impress. But of course, the public kept their eyes peeled on who wore the best dress on the red carpet. Well, Metro Magazine has spoken. It was Erich Gonzalez who stood out wearing a white old Hollywood-inspired gown by Cebuana Vanya Roma. Meanwhile, the magazine names Jericho Rosales as best-dressed male celebrity of the night. He wore a pink blazer, black trousers designed by Ziggy Savelia, and a killer smile to nail the award. But these celebrities also brought magic to the red carpet. They got netizens talking and critics nodding over their fabulous gowns. Another celebrity who sent the internet on a frenzy, Capuzo star Regine Velasquez attended the ball. This ignited more speculations that the songbird is moving to a new home. The country's crown beauties also graced the event. Of course, Miss Universe 2015, Pia Wurzbach looked like a goddess with her golden Martin Bautista gown that complemented her perfect tan. She was accompanied by her boyfriend, Marlon Stockinger. The ABS-CBN Ball aims to raise funds to address the worrying issue of child abuse. Proceeds of the ball will help rebuild a children's village in Bulacan. Pauline Verzosa, CNN Philippines. And that's what's happening in the newsroom this last day of September. I'm Maida Rodriguez. Stay with CNN Philippines where we tell the story of the Filipino. Good night.